going to read the message as uh, it was delivered to us. And these are messages from the Lord for those of you that are watching us online. This was a message that was given to uh, someone from Uganda while he was visiting this country. And he delivered this message last Sunday here. And we need to share it together with you. So be attentive and listen carefully. And not only listen, also purpose to act upon it. On, in the, on, on the 11th January 2022, at exactly 7, 15, on 7, 15 a.m., as I landed at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, I was asking the Lord for a word regarding the state of the church and the nation of Kenya. I was very eager to know what the Father has in store for his church and the great geographical location called Kenya in the current season. After landing, I was immediately picked up by the driver who was sent to pick me and he took me to my hotel and where I knelt on my knees to pray in my room, I was shifted to see something in the spiritual atmosphere above the location of this nation. There was a huge amount of anger Bitterness, hatred, strife. Shouts of violence coming out of a great multitude all over Kenya and rising up towards the heavens. And every time this was going up, it was as if a huge covering was being constructed into a thick crowd covering the whole large of Kenya. Amazingly, the Church of Jesus Christ was held underneath the formed sort of crowd because, of, because some of the people within the church and those outside the church shared something in common to create what was covering the church and the nation of Kenya. As I was praying for the Lord to help me understand further what this meant and how it can be overcome by the, by the children of God, he took me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the whole chapter, and he told me to tell everyone who will lead who will read it, who he is, and who he had called us to be in a broken world. My whole, understand, my whole understanding at the time in my hotel room went to seek for the meaning of the, of the Hebrew word love, which means, which in Hebrew means hazed so that I can be able to understand what it means to love. And he said, below are the attributes of God when it comes to being a person who walks in love from this Hebrew word. Love, or he said, is faithful. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.13, again love, or he said, in Hebrew, is loyal. You can read that in Ruth chapter 1, 16 to 17. The third attribute of love is action. John 3, 16. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is action. God who is love acted, demonstrated love by acting, by giving his son Jesus to die on the cross. 
So it doesn't mean just say that God loved, but God loved and he gave. And we are being challenged today that when we love, we must also act, show action of that love. If you do not, then love is not complete. At this point, let me continue, because what I have shared is my interpretation. Let me continue with it. At this point, I could hear audibly his voice telling me to charge his church to shift the atmosphere above with love. The only way to stop and get ready of this constructed atmosphere above was to begin to love God and each other faithfully, be loyal to each other, which is also a definition of love, as we have seen, and act in love towards another. I continue, quote, he told me, I am that I am. Ye, Asha, ye, I am the, the, the being called love, not a word. And that's we know that the Bible tells us that God is love. So he's saying, let the people be told. And that now this is me now trying to explain. I will continue. But he's saying, let the people be told. Tell them. Tell my children to love one another. Because why? Because I am the being called love. That God is saying, he is the being called what? Love. So when you say God is love, he is also telling you his name is love. So actually love is God, we can also say, because if God is love, we can equally say love is God. God is describing himself in love. In other words, for you to be able to know who he is, you need to understand what love is. And God is saying, I am the being that is called love. I think that's so very important for us to understand. Because if we understand that, then it will not be hard for us then to practice love. Let me finish the reading. Re finish the message. Let me just repeat that. He told me, I am that I am. I am the being called love, not a word. In other words, love is not that word that you think it is. In the spiritual terms, he's saying, I am the being that is called love. Tell my children to love one another and bring healing to my church and the nation of Kenya, or else that an atmosphere is ready to claim, to claim human blood. He told me to inform his children, I have no tribe. That's God saying. I am love. Therefore, since all of you came out of my being, that's God, since all of us came out of God, love as I have loved you. That's the word of God for us. As a nation, as a church. If God is love, that's what he's saying. And since you came from me, then love as I love. Because if we, come, we came from God, and indeed we believe we came from God, then we are being challenged and being told we should love others as God has loved us. And God has loved each one of us wholeheartedly. No reservation. That's why he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that you and I may be redeemed so that we can have everlasting life. 
Then he is challenging us. We need to practice the same way he loved us, the same way we are supposed to love one another. He told me, I continue, he told me to inform his children, I have no tribe, I am, I am love, therefore since all of you came out of my being, love as I have loved you. Let none of you be swayed away by your hypocritical political agenda and begin to love each other as I have loved you and called you out of myself and I will heal you, restore my church and the nation of Kenya. I think I need to repeat that. Let none of you be swayed away by your hypocritical political agenda and begin to love each other as I have loved you and called you out of myself and I will heal, restore my church and the nation of Kenya. I continue. He told me, and that's God, telling our brother, I have never called anyone to love and pray for this nation. Just finish, let me finish. But I have called you to love and pray for one another. I need to explain that. Because it can sound a bit confusing and misreading. He says, now he's, he's reporting what God has told him. That I have never called anyone to love and pray for this nation. But I have called you to love and pray for one another. The emphasis here is, if we are to win the battle and destroy the spirit that is raging over our atmosphere, that has put a shield covering over the land, that is anger, bitterness, and hatred over the land. The only way we can be able to destroy this is to understand that in the scriptures we have been called to love one another, isn't it? The emphasis is not to pray for the country in the scripture. We are taught to practice love. All right? And pray for one another. Now what that means to me, my understanding, is that if we practice love as a church, if we love as God loves, amen, there will be no hatred because I cannot, you cannot love and then hate. Is that so? You cannot love and be bitter. No. Because if I practice love, if you practice love, you are practicing then godliness because God is love. All right? And where there is no go where, where there is godliness, there is no bitterness. Query? Where there is godliness, there is no anger. Is that true? Where there is godliness, there is no hatred. No one can murder if he loves God. Because God is not a murderer. You're getting my point. If we practice love in the church and outside the church, we will demonstrate godliness. And I can tell you, where there is, no, where there is godliness, evil cannot drive. Correct? So how do we then overcome the evils that are in our country? It's by taking the charge as a church. How do we shift this atmosphere that we are supposed to, to shift? Because the state of the church today and the state of the nation today 
If you like, you can call the message the state of the church and the state of the nation of, the, of Kenya. It is what has been described. And that's how God is seeing the country. We are being told there is hatred that is rising to the, to the, to the atmosphere or to the heavens. There is anger and bitterness rising. There is hatred that is rising. And all that is forming a shield. It's like a big sheet that covers the nation. And then there are voices of violence that are now rising. And we know what violence is all about. It's destruction. When there is hatred, people rise against each other. We saw it happening the, the previous years when we had elections. More so, 2007. Some of the people in this congregation and others that are listening to me. Some of you were, what, in, in whatever, I, what were they called? Simukua wakibisi. I, ID, internally depressed persons. You cease to be a person, you are referred to an IDP because you are evicted from your home. Because you happened to be where you are not wanted because of your name or because of your tribe. What had happened? And this is what I want to, take, to remind us today. In the course of the years, Seeds of hatred were being planted by the enemy through our politicians and through our leaders also in churches because we are practicing tribalism. And as we continued to plant these seeds, something was growing. And they were rising up. They were going to the atmosphere. And by the time we went to the elections, there was so much hatred in the country. There was so much anger in the country. There was so much bitterness in the country that they were just waiting for a trigger. Announcement of elections. Our candidate has lost. Our candidate has won. One side is celebrating. One side not, is not mourning. It's actually in violence. Again is the other. Why? Because the spirit of hatred was already in the air. You wonder how could it be? And I remember this very well. And this was before even 2007. Let me take you back to 1992. That's when it started. There was this man whom I met. He had come to be with his relatives where we lived in Donholm those days. And he was narrating to us what happened. But in his family, he is the only one who survived. No, no, sorry. Not that. No, he's not the only one. He survived, but his wife and the, and the child that was on the back was killed. He, the, only, the reason why he survived is because he was not inside the house. When he heard them coming, he ran out. But the wife and the children were in the house. When they came in, they attacked the wife, they killed her, and they killed the child that was on the back. That is how wicked 
a human being under the influence of the spirit of the enemy can become. And the people who did that, and I'm not saying this to remind people of the past. I'm sharing this because we are supposed to learn from experience. That's why history is written so that we can learn from it, so that we don't repeat the same mistakes. The shocking thing is that the people who did that, he knew, he knew them. That as they killed the wife, she was calling their names and pleading with them. The other children were in the house. Thank God they were not attacked. But they were the ones who were able to narrate what happened. It is so and so. And this so and so is the neighbor. Why is he killing his, his brother, the other person, because he belongs to a different tribe? The shocking thing is that all of them were drinking from the same well or from the same ta tank of water because this person whom they, ki they killed the wife, by the grace of God, he had more resources than his neighbors. And he had a lot of water, storage of water. He shared with his neighbors. Now, I want, I'm sharing this to see, for you to see what hatred can do. What the devil can do when we ignore some things that people forget at that time that this is our brother who has been giving us water, who has been giving us food. And he was not even a politician. They do not even know how he voted because voting is, we vote in secret. He may have voted for a different candidate altogether. But because he belonged to this tribe that is perceived to have stolen or won the election, whatever you call it, then he deserves punishment and judgment. Brethren, I am speaking this. I am provoked by this message. Because we are the only one who can shift the atmosphere. It is only the church that can shift the atmosphere. Because we are the only one who understands the mind of God. We are the only one who need to understand that in God there is no tribe. He created man and a woman. And he never gave them a tag that you are a Hebrew, or you are a, a Greek, or you are German, or you are a Kikuyu, or you are a Ruo, or you are a whichever tribe. But graciously, he allowed us to, to, allow, to, to participate and to become what we want to become. But that doesn't mean that we have ceased to be his children. Every human being has come from God. And life of a human being matters. No one is authorized to take any other's, as other's life. This is a message. We must practice love. The state of the nation, the state of the church, is that there is hatred, there is bitterness, there is anger, there is violence brewing. If it's not arrested, it will bring a lot of damage. Lastly, Go back to the message from the man of God. He said, he told me, that's God, to tell them not to pray without love. Let everybody hear this message. Because Kenyans, we are good at praying. Believe me. But you'll even find people in the same hall they are lifting their hands to pray, but they don't see eye to eye. After prayers, they will not greet each other. 
That is what God is saying. Don't even dare to pray because the answer is your prayers will not be heard. God is not going to answer our prayers if we pray without love. Let the nation of the Republic of Kenya know this. It doesn't matter how many solemn assemblies we shall call my fellow ministers and intercessors. It doesn't matter how many days we pray and fast. We can go to the mountains. We can deny ourselves everything. But if we have no love, we are nothing. We will not be heard. And that's what God is saying now, Kenyans. Let everybody who is hearing my voice hear this. Do not call a solemn assembly before you teach your people how to love. Whether you are a bishop, whether you are the pastor, or whether whatever position you are, God is telling us. We should not pray without love. And therefore, and how can we practice love? We need to learn to practice love. Because I cannot tell you to love others if I don't love you. Or if I don't practice love. I cannot teach about love if I don't love. Divisions among us. They must love and then pray. Then I will answer. That's what God is saying. We must love and then pray and then we shall expect God to answer. So if you are hearing me today and you know that you do not love your brother or your sister or your parents and it doesn't matter what they did because love is not conditional. Love them. It even says love your enemies. Jesus taught that. You and I must practice love if we are to shift the atmosphere. In love, I will listen. That's what God is saying. In love, I will listen and answer when they call upon me. Without love, prayer is useless. Let them not waste time and energy. Please, let us not waste time and energy in calling for prayers. Because God will not answer us. Let us not waste time and energy in gathering and calling all the people to hold back. Prayer for the nation. Yet even the people who are seated on the dais cannot see eye to eye. They cannot share anything else. What has brought them together is because they have come to pray. After that, they cannot even share a meal together. They will not even ride in the same car. And that's what God is saying then, Kenyan. It is time you stop praying if you do not love. But if you practice love, God has said, he will listen and he will answer and he will shift the atmosphere. Do we want God to shift the atmosphere? Then we must love. Let's read Corinthians chapter 13 because that's a, the scripture that was given. First Corinthians chapter 13. <clears throat> If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a cranging cymbal. Hold it there. Do we speak in tongues? Of men? Yes, we do. You speak Doruo, don't you? If you are Luo, you speak Kikuyu, if you are Kikuyu. Those are tongues of men. Swahili. 
English, we speak all that. And of angels, but not have love. We speak in tongues that we do not understand. Some of those tongues are tongues of angels. Others may be given languages of men, but they, are, they cannot understand because they don't know those languages. But we are being told, and this is the church that is being addressed now. It's not the non-believers, because non-believers will not speak in tongues. They are not spirit-filled. This message is to the church of Jesus Christ. It's saying, if I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become a sounding brass. That is the state of the church today in the Republic of Kenya. We are speaking in tongues of men and of angels, but we do not have love then this is what we have become, sounding brass or clang, clanging symbol. We are just debes. That's how God sees us. Bishop, that's how God sees your denomination. Pastor, that's how God sees your congregation without love. We may speak in tongues. We may lift our own our hands up to the Lord. We may jump. We may sing. Accept this living sacrifice. But if this living sacrifice does not practice love, it is just becoming, it has become a sounding brass and a ringing sable. That is the state of the church in the Republic of Kenya and in the world today. And by extension, as I've said before, if you want to know the state of a nation, look at the state of the church. What you see outside is a reflection of what is in the church. When you see bitterness and anger and hatred, those things are being practiced by believers. Why? Because the Bible says, you and I are the light of the world, isn't it? Then how come there is darkness in the world if you are the light? And darkness cannot thrive where there is light. It means the light is not shining or you have stopped being a light, the light. The Bible says the church is the salt of the earth. Where there is salt, there is no rottenness. Because salt preserves. But what do you and I see when we open our TV? What do you and I read when we look at the, the, the newspapers? When we go to the social media, what kind of messages do we see? Rottenness. That is the state of the nation. Equally, it is the state of the church because you cannot separate the two. There is a good reason why God chose a priest or a prophet and a king and the prophet was supposed to anoint the king. Because every nation is supposed to be under God. Sounding brass, all clanging symbol. This has to change if we are to shift the atmosphere, create an environment of peace so that the gospel can be preached, souls can come to the kingdom, people run to churches instead of running out of churches, which is the norm today. It was not so in the beginning. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, a lot of prophecy has been taking place. There are a lot of prophets in this country. And understand all the mysteries. Uh -huh. And all knowledge. And though I have fallen, and though I have 
all faith so that I could remove mountains. Don't we remove mountains? But have not love, I am what? I am? Please lead with me. Musunika Sirisikia, Sio Mimi. Is the Lord speaking to us through the scriptures, isn't it? Said we read it. He said, I am nothing. Do you know, do you want to know the state of the church today? The state of the church is nothing. The church is, that's what the, the scripture says. Other fashion says, I am useless. God is looking down and saying, the church in the Republic of Kenya is just the same as the nation of Kenya. Where there is hatred, where there is bitterness, where there is anger and violence, that nation is empty. It is useless. And that's the state of the nation, which is the state of the church. But the people to blame most are us, the church, because we are supposed to influence the world. So hear me, or hear the word of the Lord. Prophets, seers, though you prophesy and you can understand mysteries and you have all knowledge, and God is saying, yes, you prophesy, which means you are truly a prophet. You are not a false prophet. He's not referring to false prophets here. Let's understand the scriptures. He is talking to you who is called as a prophet of God. But this is what he's telling you. It doesn't matter. You can prophesy. You can understand the mysteries of God. You can reveal to us the revelation. And we are not doubting you've been to heaven. Because the gifts of God are without repentance. Isn't it? God will use you as long as he has gifted you. Because the message is for the body. But he see the word. That is shocking, that I can do all that, but God says, I am nothing. Will I qualify to go to heaven if I am nothing? The answer is no. That's what God is telling us. And he's saying, that is the state of the church. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, And though I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it will profit me nothing. You will gain nothing. You can give to the poor. You can give your tithe. You can support the project. You can do anything. You can give everything. But God is saying, minus love, it profits nothing. That's the state of the church today. Can we shift that? Yes. That's what we are being told. This is not, we are not just hearing this. We are hearing and we shall do what we are being told to do. And this is the message to the church of Jesus Christ in the Republic of Kenya. Hear the word of the Lord. He is calling you to love and to practice it. Otherwise, it will profit you nothing. You can preach the gospel. You can give the money. You can support projects. You can build churches. But where there is no love, it profits nothing. Verse 4. Love serves long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not halved up. That's what love is. It serves us long. Just go back. Don't be quick. It's long suffering. It is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not boastful. That's the word. It's not puffed up. It's not proud. These are things that we need to take to God. 
that none of us is accused of not loving. None of us is accused of not of being proud. None of us is accused of parading ourselves. Show up. You know, showing what we can do. And that's what we do most of the time. There's nothing wrong in calling the media to cover a service. Because we need the others to hear. But there is everything wrong to parade miracles so that people can come to your church. Because then you'll be tempted even to fake miracles. And that's what is happening to many churches. It's time to love. It's time to listen to what God is saying. Verse 5. Love does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. And thinks no evil. 6. It does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in truth. So sometimes we rejoice in iniquities, in injustice. We glorify this. And sometimes I've even heard people say, Our thief. They're not denying, Ameiba, but I can't say, Mani Muizwe. Wow, see your word to me, Missy Mofany Moja. Wow. That's rejoicing in iniquity. Love is absent there. Love rejoices in truth. Love rejoices in justice, not in injustices. What are we seeing in our country today? When a group is beaten by the other, because of politics. Even the church, instead of condemning, they say they deserved it. Why are they not supporting our candidate? Rejoicing in iniquity. Instead of rejoicing in truth. Seven. Love bears all things. It tolerates all things. Love is tolerance, believes all things, hopes all things, endure all things. This is what happens when we love. We'll have no issue because we will tolerate people. We will tolerate their, 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 their mistakes. We'll not be quick to judge them. Love does not judge. Love corrects. Endures all things. Eight. Love never fails. Why are we failing as a nation? Yeah? Why are families failing in this country? Now you know the answer. You know why? Even our economy is failing. Where there is no love, things fail. But love does not fail. You want to succeed in life? Practice love. Love God with all your heart. But whether there are prophecies, they will do what? Fail. Please hear this. Prophecies will fail. It doesn't say false prophecies will fail. It says prophecies will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. There will be a time there will be no more speaking in tongues. Whether there is knowledge, it will one day disappear, vanish. Let's continue. But love never. All others will fail, but love remains. So the choice is yours. You want to be a prophet? Practice love. Because prophecy will fail, but because love remains, you will also remain. Amen? In the absence of love, when prophecy fails, it fails with, with you, isn't it? But when you have love, 
Whatever, when other things fail, then you remain. Because love never fails. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Oh, no. Okay, let's go to verse 9. For we know in parts, we prophesy in parts, in other words, you are not perfect. No one is. What we see, what we hear, we are only seeing part of it. You should not be boastful that because you had a revelation, now your pastor is junior than you because he doesn't prophesy. And you prophesy. And that's the only thing you can do. You cannot even teach. You are only doing it in part, not in full. Whatever we do, we do it in part. We need to understand that. Therefore, we cannot boast of anything. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Verse 10. But when that which is perfect has come, praise God. Amen. That which is perfect has come, then that which is part will be done away with. So there is something that has to come, which is perfect. And that's what you and I need to be pursuing. And we can only pursue this which is perfect in love. Because the one we are, we are pursuing, what we are pursuing is actually in him who is love. You're getting, that, you're getting the revelation. So for you to one day be perfect, become perfect, when everything else fails, when the gift fails, it's only love that will make you perfect. Then that which is part will be done away with. Eleven. When I was a child... Not me, but of course it applies also to me. Okay. This is now the writer. I spoke as a child. And all of us, when we were a child, we spoke like? The fact that we are so eloquent today does not mean that that's how we were born. We learned. We were taught. I understand. I understood as a child. You know that child sometimes that you call, you know, Ngombe, Pani Welewi? You are also there. Maybe you are also a Ngombe one time. But when I became a man, I put up what? Childish things. You cannot continue to be saying ta 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 ma 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 and you are 18 years of age. You are 25 years of age. You are an old man with gray hair, like me. But you are still struggling with some things. Something like love. You are still struggling to love. You cannot love your brothers and your sisters. You cannot love a member of another denomination then you are still a child. You have not grown up. You are behaving like a child. You need to put away childish things. And this is what God is telling the church today. There was a time that you are being fed with milk. When will you start chewing bones? Time has come for the church in Kenya. To now leave childish things, small and petty things, divisions among tribal, that so and so cannot become a leader because he belongs to this tribe. We have seen people fighting for positions in church, churches being closed because one party is fighting the other. And when you look at the reason is this one belongs to this tribe, this one belongs to this other tribe. Childish things. It is time we grow up and allow God to appoint leaders 
And by the way, why do we practice democracy in church? Why do we vote for positions in church? Now, I'm posing this. Should we be voting who should become a bishop? Shouldn't we all be together, you know, if it is who is, who is choosing, given the responsibility, shouldn't there be consensus among those that are supposed to pick the leader as they listen to the Holy Spirit? Yes, of course, I know in the scripture, when they wanted to replace the disciple, they cast forth. But look at what they did. They prayed. Cast. And they were casting their votes. They were directed to whom to cast the vote to. If we must elect, can we listen to the Holy Spirit? So that whoever loses does not go to court. Because it was so clear God has spoken. Anyway, let me leave that to the, the leaders. Verse 12 says what? For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. There's a time that will come. What you see in Dimly, when you allow love to grow in you and you practice love and love is a being because love is God, then a time will come when we stop seeing things dimly because our eyes, the one that we have today, will have seized and will have new eyes that see things differently. Verse 13, the last one. says, and now abide. What? Faith. Hope. And what? Love. When everything else ceases, because everything else will cease, titles will go, positions will go, tongues will go, prophecies will go, apostleship, leverage, and by the way, there is no word leverage in the scriptures. So I don't know why we fight for it. It's administrative. I had someone correct somebody when he was referred to as a pastor. And he corrected the person who referred to him as a pastor with a lot of anger and bitterness. I am not a pastor. Don't call me a pastor. I am reverend. And I said, whoa. Well, didn't call him foolish, but I, in my mind I knew this one does not know the scriptures. Because in the Bible, there are pastors, apostles, evangelists, prophets. Which is the other one? Teachers. There is no leverage. There is no bishop. There is no general overseer. There are no archbishops. Those are the things that we fight for. Positions. And because of that, we fight, we displace, we reorganize because we must campaign to get those positions. We affect the body, which is one. We divide it into divisions because I want my part. I want my part. The Lord is saying, those things will cease, but these three will remain. I better have faith. I better have hope. I better have love. But among the three, these three, but the greatest of this is love. And love is God. Love is a being. That is why love is the greatest. Because God is the greatest. I would rather identify with him.
that's the message for us. The challenge to the nation, the church in Kenya. Shift the atmosphere. Can start now. We don't have to wait until August to call solemn assemblies. Let's start practicing love today. As we practice love, our prayers will be heard. And this nation will not be divided. We shall have elections. The one candidate will be declared the president. We shall accept him or her, whether we voted for him or not, or her. Why? Because we have learned to practice love, and we have refused to be divided by politicians or church leaders, because none of them is innocent. But God is saying, if we practice love, we shall shift the atmosphere. And this darkness that covers the nation, a sheet of bitterness, anger, hatred, it can only be removed by us practicing love. Would you please promise me that from today you will love unconditionally? That even the person that has hurt you so much and you've never been able to love that person and forgive, after hearing this message, you will love that person, forgive that person, and one way to demonstrate that you have loved that person is by talking to them. Whether they will accept it or not, talk to them. Set the messages. Show them love and mean it. And then practice it, praying for them. As you pray for them, when you have already practiced, you are practicing love, send them gifts. If they return the gift, is okay. In heaven, it will be accepted that you gave a gift and you have a reward for that. Amen? And within no time, they will also start realizing there is something that is shifting and they will start loving. Let us practice love. Let us obey the scriptures. Let us obey the voice of the Lord and the Lord will bless this nation and we shall have peace, peaceful elections. Amen? God can I tell you something? It's only you who doesn't know who is the next president of the Republic of Kenya. God is not part of you. He knows. Amen? Yes. So stop fighting over this, over that. Stop aligning yourself with your candidate because he's wrong to your tribe. He may not be preferred candidate by God. What will you do? Why don't you listen to God? Why don't you pray and ask God to guide you? So that if God guides you and he tells you it is so and so, whether he's of your tribe or not, then you'll be, at least you know you'll be on side, the God's side. You don't want to suffer the shame when you vote and your candidate loses only to discover that it was not God's choice and you are a godly person. How come you missed it and you are godly? It's because you are biased and you didn't allow God to speak to you. You didn't practice love. What we are being told to do is to love all of them. Amen? Whether you'll vote for them or not, practice love. When you're praying, pray for them, all of them. One of them will be the president. So you better pray for all of them because one of them will become a president. God bless you. Amen. Let's all start on our feet. We apologize. We've taken a little bit longer, but I needed to deliver the message, and I feel relieved. I have delivered the message to the church in Kenya, to the nation of Kenya, and I have no regret. I have obeyed what God told me to do. So please pray for me. I hope no one throws a stone to me. Because I did not speak on my own, I shared a message that was given to our brother from Uganda. He's not a Kenyan. He has no interest in our politics. So you cannot say he is tribal. No. He just listened to the Lord, and the Lord gave him a message. And he happened to deliver it in this church.
So that's why I took the responsibility because there must have been a reason as to why he delivered it here. We had not invited him. No, he was on his own business. But he said he came to church, to this particular church that particular day. He would have gone anywhere else. But there is a reason why you heard the message. Because God trusts you. Amen? You can work with him. You can shift the atmosphere. We can love everyone. And that's what we are going to do. Amina, you want to take a second? Not a second. Maybe have a minute. Just respond to that. Respond. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to speak to you. If he directs you to forgive someone, please do. And I know he is directing you to do that. Then promise him. You will love. You will practice love. Because love is a being. Love is God. Father in heaven, we ask you to help us to understand this message. May the Holy Spirit inter interpret it, reveal it to us, so that we may understand the assignment of shifting the atmosphere through love. Violence, hatred, and bitterness will shift from this nation when we cover the atmosphere with love. And that's our prayer today. Those that have heard the message, Lord, I pray that they will practice what they have learned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a Mark announced that there is someone who passed on. Yes, there's a, a girl, Elonica. She's a teen. Uh, she's in teen class. Uh, she's from Kibera. I understand she passed on. She's doing unwell because of asthma. Uh, we request the fellowships that um, in Ayani and Kibera and anyone else, let's give that family fellowship. They will know us by our love. Amen? This is an opportunity to share the love of Christ with the family and the neighborhood and we will practice, we will show the love of Christ to this family. Let's do that. Amen? And any other support that is required. If you want to help, you can see our brother Mark. Lift up your hand, sir. The young man yeah, that was leading us to prayers here. He's the one in charge of the teens, the fellowship in Kibera. Uh, if you want to, 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 to help in finances or you want to visit with the family, you can see him. He will give you direction. And now may the grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.